What are common foot types? Well, the two common foot types are a flat foot and a high arched foot. And of course, uh, there's a spectrum uh, between those two ranges. Now, the reason this is important is that the type of foot that you have dictates how force is going to go through the foot. It de determines which tendons are going to be subject to increased uh, traction forces and which joints are going to be subject to increased compressive forces. And when you're talking about chronic foot problems, these really come about by the way that force goes through the foot with each step that we take. And so the foot shape, the foot type ends up being very important. How can I tell which foot type I have? Well, sometimes it's quite obvious. So if you have an obvious flat foot, uh, you, the arch is collapsed. Um, but sometimes it's less obvious. There's a number of people who think that they have a flat foot, but in fact they have a neutral or even a high arched foot. Uh, if you can put uh, a couple fingers uh, underneath your arch, you probably have a higher type foot. Uh, also, we have uh, imprint devices such as a Harris mat, which allow us to look at the load and through the mid part of the foot, and that we can tell what a flat foot is and what a high arch foot is. What are the characteristics of a flat foot? Well, a, a flat foot tends to be um, a suppler foot and the bones on the inside of the foot don't really take their share of the weight and the arch uh, collapses down and those are sort of the main characteristics of a flat foot. The other thing is the heel tends to be splayed out to the outside in what we call a valgus position. What conditions are associated with a flat foot? So with a flat foot you're going to have increased tension through the structures on the inside of the arch. You just think about all those structures getting repetitively pulled every time you take a, a step. So for example, posterior tibial tendonitis, you see that in someone with a flat foot. Plantar fasciitis, we often see that in someone with a flat foot. And uh, things like tarsal tunnel syndrome. In addition, uh, there's some compression forces that will go, for example, through the second or third metatarsal uh, at the base of the second and third toe. And so you can get metatarsalgia in that area. You can even get stress fractures of the second and third metatarsal. So those are some of the conditions that we might characteristically see with a flat foot. What are the characteristics of a high arched foot? So for a high arched foot, you have really the opposite. The uh, arch is actually quite stable and the first metatarsal, the area associated with the great toe, is actually pointed downwards. And so you have a stiffer, more rigid foot and uh, the heel tends to be pointed towards the inside and sometimes we'll describe it as a peekaboo heel sign because you can kind of see the inside of the heel when you look at somebody's foot from the front. What conditions are associated with this type of foot? Well in a high arch foot you're going to have almost the exact opposite loading characteristics. The tendons on the outside of the foot, so the perineal tendons, are going to be excessively loaded. So you tend to get perineal tendonitis and uh, conditions like that. You can also get uh, ankle instability and there tends to be more compression over the base of the first metatarsal because that area is really quite rigid. So you tend to get conditions like sesamoiditis. In addition, the inside part of the ankle joint tends to be increasingly loaded with compression forces. So conditions like um, Taylor osteochondral lesions, we'll often see those on the in inside or medial aspect of the ankle in someone who has a higher arched foot. How is treatment affected by a foot type? Well, the principle of treatment, regardless of what type of foot you have, when you're dealing with a chronic condition that's related to how force is transmitted through the foot, is to try and disperse that force more widely across the foot. So you're going to be looking to play around with the shoe wear that you use, and with the orthotics or the inserts that you have in the shoes and different inserts and different shoes can, depending on the foot type, can help disperse the force more appropriately.